To find the next contender in our countdown of extreme loudmouths, we travel to a school where you can hardly hear yourself think. Good morning, dear children. Good morning to you. Good morning, dear children. Good morning to you. One study showed that many classrooms in the United States are so noisy, only 75% of what the teacher says can be heard. So imagine trying to communicate to a school of 4 billion individuals. No wonder herring have found an unusual way of being heard, because they live in the largest schools in the world. Congregations of herring can stretch for four cubic kilometers. They're one of the densest concentrations of animals on the planet. No one knew that herring were loudmouths until a scientific study in 2003 discovered that when herring released a stream of bubbles, they produced a noise. Only the bubbles weren't coming from the fish's mouths. Herring were making a noise called a fast repetitive tick by emitting gas from their bottoms. Fast repetitive ticks, or FRTs, last between one and seven seconds and are produced at such a low frequency that scientists needed specialized equipment to hear them. Each FRT may be small, but they're extremely loud. The herring is number three in the countdown because the noise produced by an FRT is the equivalent of a jet at takeoff. Scientists think the most likely use of FRTs is for social contact to prevent the school scattering. But perhaps it's not surprising that others have suggested the loud emissions could be used to scare predators away. Should a human make an FRT in public, the result can be embarrassing. But then, some noises can even make you sick. Anyone who has worked in an open plan office knows just how annoying noises can be. Ricky, this is Jane. I'm ceramic. I need the electrician here too. It's no wonder that people call in acoustical consultant Martin Schiff from Cerami Associates in New York. He has three ways to find out just how annoying your office really is. One of the tests we can do is a sound transmission test. We use this device to generate what's called pink noise, which sounds a lot like static. We amplify it through this loudspeaker and then use a sound level meter to measure the level of noise inside the room. This is called a tapping machine. We use it to test how much noise goes through the floor from people walking. We can pop a balloon and use the sound level meter to measure how long it takes the sound to decay. It's Martin's job to provide advice on how to reduce the noise levels in a building, which is important because noisy workplaces have been shown to increase stress that can lead to medical and psychological problems. So, spare a thought for the poor old herring. How would you like to live surrounded by one billion neighbors that are always FRTing?
Dive into the waters of the Pacific Ocean and you may hear the songs of the animals at number two in the countdown. Of all the whales, the humpback is the most vocal. Its songs last anywhere from a few minutes to more than half an hour and can be heard up to 160 kilometers away. But another whale is such a loudmouth that it can produce a noise to rival a rocket. One of the world's biggest sounds comes from the world's largest animal, the blue whale. Unlike humans, whales don't have vocal cords. Instead, they make noise by moving air from the larynx into their nasal sacs. The resulting honk when a blue whale blows its nose is so loud, it can be heard by a whale on the far side of the Atlantic Ocean. It's thought that their infrasonic calls bounce between layers of water of different temperatures. This serves to funnel their song right across the Atlantic. To find the human equivalents of the blue whale, you need to travel to Scarborough, England. This is a screaming competition. The rules are simple. Just scream as loud as you can. While most of us would be lucky to break 110 decibels, the loudest scream in the world reached 129. That's louder than an ambulance siren. <laughs> Listening to the world's best human screamers definitely crosses the pain threshold. But there's another whale that can be so loud, it's lethal. The sperm whale hunts using sound. The action takes place in the darkest depths of the ocean, so scientists can only guess at what happens. When the whale dives, it navigates like a bat, firing out pulses of sound and listening to the echoes. The reflected sound gives them a picture of their surroundings, and it also locates their prey, a giant squid. Scientists think the sperm whale can focus its sonar into a tight beam. The result is a sonic cannon, firing pulses of sound as loud as a rocket launch. That's more than enough to stun even a giant squid. But it's still not enough to make the sperm whale the most extreme loudmouth in the countdown. The most extreme loudmouth in the countdown may not be an opera singer, but it can break glass using nothing but sound. Every material has a natural frequency at which it vibrates. If you impart enough energy to the glass at its resonant frequency, you can cause the glass to shatter. However, our next contender doesn't smash a champagne flute, but an aquarium. The loudest animal in the countdown is the pistol shrimp. Found in tropical reefs around the world, this shrimp gets its name because it uses that large claw to fire a bullet of sound. 
It's a sonic boom so loud it can break glass or the protective armor of other shrimps. The concussion is strong enough to kill shrimp and fish two meters away. The pistol shrimp's claw looks suitably lethal, but scientists have discovered that it wasn't directly responsible for the terrible noise. When they took a closer look at the claw, they found that the sound was not generated when the pincers slammed into each other. Instead, when the shrimp closes its claw, it shoots out a jet of water that moves so fast it creates an air bubble in the sea. When the bubble implodes, it creates a massive shock wave. The noise of this tiny explosion is thought to be even louder than sounds generated by a mighty whale. When researchers examined the explosion in the dark, they discovered that the collapsing bubble also emits a tiny flash of light. It only lasts for a few trillionths of a second. But in that time, the temperature inside the bubble must momentarily climb above 4,700 degrees Celsius. The flash from the collapsing bubble is too small for us to see with the naked eye but the associated sonic boom is more than enough to kill shrimp and break glass. There is one sport that also breaks glass. Drag racers really are ear-splitting Loudon Boomer. These engines blast out more than 130 decibels. But there's another form of drag racing that's louder much louder. Welcome to the wonderful world of decibel drag racing. It's very similar to uh, like a streetcar drag racing except you don't take off. Contestants race not with engines but some very high-tech car stereos. The aim is to find out who can make the most noise even if it means generating sounds that would instantly perforate your eardrum. Simply choose your favorite tone and pump up the volume. In the extreme class, some stereos can blast out more than 170 decibels. But that does require some serious modifications. After all, ordinary cars are not designed to cope with the noise equivalent of a jet engine at takeoff. Which is why some competitors make sure that the vibrations don't shake the car to pieces by bolting the doors shut with threaded 25 millimeter steel rods. And they replace the windows with plexiglass up to two centimeters thick. They even reinforce the doors by filling them with concrete. And all this to survive a decibel drag race that will last less than five seconds. In the extreme class, the volume of noise generated by the speakers requires so much power that after only a few seconds, the system burns out. While decibel drag racing is an expensive hobby, the Pistol Shrimp Sonic Blast is low-tech and low-maintenance. With nothing more than a flick of its claw, a shrimp can generate noises in excess of 200 decibels. So, it's no wonder that when it comes to making a lot of noise, the pistol shrimp really is the most extreme. <laughs>